one. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to the prayer table this morning. Uh, I hope you had a good evening. Uh, I didn't, but I got to sleep about 2, 2.30. Oh. But that's okay. I, uh, you know, when you're as beautiful as me, you don't need much sleep. Just <laughs> goes right on through. Now, I noticed that little uh, Rick Burke there, he uh, kind of like <laughs> slept in yesterday. <laughs> and it was uh, shady around his house. <laughs> and when he woke up, woo. All right. So we're glad he's back with us. And uh, we're going to talk about suffering. You know, we sometimes we don't want to, you know, get into uh, the negative parts of it, but realize that man was already born into a negative sense. He was born into sin. Uh, so all men of sin come short of the glory of God. And all were born sinners, even though they weren't born, even though they had not committed the sin uh, after Adam's act. But. They were born of his nature. And so we're going to talk about today the suffering of Christ. Mm. Uh, yesterday, we just kind of talked generally about suffering. And uh, Philip, you've been married for a number of years, so you understand suffering to some degree. <laughs> and uh, I'm kidding you. And uh, that had nothing to do with the uh, intense suffering of jesus christ in our place so mm -hmm. we're going to discuss today the suffering of jesus if you know somebody that has uh is dealing with suffering or uh, going through things that are physical emotional spiritual uh because of their walk with god because of their stand for god or something of that nature well we're going to be talking about that type of stuff today i mean at uh, today tomorrow and Thursday. So I want to encourage you to join us. And uh, Nikki, if you could go, go over to Luke. Uh, I think it's the 27th chapter. Okay. And uh, look down at what the verse. Mm, maybe uh, 20. <coughs> okay. And then also. As soon as you get done with that little section Wait. of scripture. Luke what? 27? 27. There is no is Luke 27. There's not Luke 27? Mm -mm. Oh, my word, Philip. I was using Philip's Bible. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> There's stuff in this Bible that nobody's supposed to read. <laughs> uh, is it 20, 22? Oh. I'm sorry. 22. Mm hmm. What verse? Uh, let's look down at uh, how about mm -mm -mm. boy, I just preached on this Sunday, should have known that. Uh, is it 20? Uh, 20, Nikki. Okay. Likewise, Wait, also this cup. No, there's no. I think it's 15. He, he's on a, is it 15? He's on uh, the road of Emmaus. And oh, he no. runs into him. No, and, that's up further, I think. All right. Sorry about that, folks. I was that's looking okay. at some other. It's a chapter. It's 24th chapter, Dad. Uh, 24th. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. A child shall lead them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. And what verse did you say, though? Uh, let's look at down around uh, verse. Well, we'll just look at 21 and go down from there. Okay. It said, um, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and beside all this. Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, a certain woman also in our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying, they had also seen a vision of angels, 
which said that he was alive. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it. And it even so, as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, because, that, okay, Nikki, that is the crux of what Jesus tells the disciples. And he calls them back to suffering. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that there was a prophetic telling, a foretelling of the things that Jesus would suffer for mankind. He says all the, that he should fulfill the scriptures from Moses and to the prophets, that he should uh, fulfill all them. So the Old Testament told us about the need for someone to die for the innocent. Mm -hmm. The sufferings of Christ simply means the penalty, physical, emotion, and spiritual penalties for sin. And somebody else carries them or somebody else suffers in your place. Mm. And so he comes and says, look, they have come, they were prophetically told you. And there's like a 3,000 scriptures that talk about the prophetic coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we look, look over them, but every time Jesus paid the price in our place, then we have to realize that the benefit of that payment is now ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, we call it, like a substitutionary, one dying in the place of another. Mm -hmm. Not that the one dying was guilty, but the one that was guilty was free because of his death, the mm -hmm. great exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we see that we, Jesus came and he was telling them that he was supposed to suffer for that. And if you'll go to verse 46, Nikki, and yep. read that. It says, and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So, and, yeah. Nope, that, that's enough. So that tells us that Jesus referred them back to the prophecies that went before him from Moses yeah. to his death. And it says that Jesus must suffer, pay the price, and he must raise from the dead. In other words, this suffering would lead to his death, paying <coughs> the price of man's transgressions, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So we know that Jesus suffered in our stead. And if he suffered for something, then you and I don't have to suffer for that transgression. If a bill was paid, you don't have to go back and pay it again. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And thus, that brings us to, uh, if you can go to Acts 3.18, Nikki, and the reason I'm uh, reiterating yeah. this over and over is so that once somebody has paid something, only a foolish person would require for it or would try to pay it again their self. Right. So Acts 3.18 says, but those things before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So that was all fulfilled in Jesus. In other words, the price for our sin has been paid. And it was stated that the payment was fulfilled by the act of someone, one Christ Jesus, suffering in our stead. Mm -hmm. Now, if he suffered for it, then we don't have to 
Supper for. And now, if you will go to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Nikki. Good Lord. I know. A lot of scripture. Three, I like it, though, because it proves it. 13 and 14. Uh, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Well, okay. So that right there tells us that Jesus hung on the cross in our place. Mm -hmm. And he hung there to suffer for a purpose. What was the yes. purpose? That the blessings of Abraham would come upon you and I, the mm -hmm. Gentile. Amen. And Amen. so Jesus' suffering was the one that bore the curse. What was the transgression or what was the cost or the suffering of sin from the garden? Mm. Adam, you're cursed. Yeah. Mm. He removed him from the presence of God. The curse was the physical manifestation of the cost of sin. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus bore that. Mm. Now, if he's already paid it. You don't have to pay mm -hmm. or suffer any yes. of the curse. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because it's already been paid. Mm -hmm. yep. And since it's been paid, the curse has been relieved or taken off of man now the only thing that is left is the blessing of god amen praise god praise god so when we talk about you know being saved we're talking about being freed from all penalty of sin mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about uh, us being saved we are freed from all of sin's dominion. Yes. If you pay the bill at the grocery store, Philip, you're no longer Amen. subject to that grocery store owner. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's perfect. Been paid. Yeah. Amen. Praise so God. So you can go in there with dignity. <laughs> you can go in there with love. You can go in there mm -hmm. with, with uh, joy. You can go in there with a new identity. Because the old Philip owed the debt. Mm -hmm. The new Philip is a man that has been freed from that debt Amen. at the cost of someone else. Amen. Amen. Praise so God. So that's why everything about the curse is done away with in mm -hmm. the church. Amen. Not that it's going to be done away with. It is it's done, away with. done away with. Amen. Praise Jesus God. Jesus has already suffered once. And that was enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so when we look at that, people say, well, you know, that's just a bless me gospel. Well, being freed from sin can be nothing else. Amen. Right? Amen. And so when, when it tells us that we are blessed with the blessings of Abraham because Jesus hung on the cross, that is the suffering or the totality of the payment of our yep. sins. Right. Amen. God. So he dies for us, and we receive what? We receive the rewards of a righteous man. Amen. Someone that has never sinned in their life. Amen. Someone Amen. that has paid their debt. Someone Amen. that has died for their sins. Mm -hmm. We have a thing in uh, the legal system called double jeopardy. Mm -hmm. If you would commit certain crime like a killing someone and you would go to prison and pay the cost for it and you mm -hmm. came out and that person was alive if you killed him you couldn't be sentenced or you couldn't right. be tried for it because you right. already prepaid mm -hmm. for Amen. the sin yes okay so what would you be you would be free you Amen. wouldn't have to go to prison you wouldn't have to be behind right. bars you wouldn't have to eat their food. You wouldn't have to uh, do anything they told you to do. Why? Because the debt's been paid. 
Yeah. Yep. Praise God. Well, uh, we have a prayer request from John Hall. He says he has a friend he's been witnessing to that needs prayer. He's in the hospital from a gallbladder infection that mm. caused his heart to only function at 15% and has wow. caused blood clots in his lungs. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring this friend of John's to you right now. And in the name of Jesus, by the authority of that name that has been given unto us, we, the righteous people of God, curse right now yeah. all of this side effect god of this gallbladder attack yes. these yes. blood clots we curse them we command yes. them to die to dissipate yes. and yes. to leave his body in yes. the name of jesus let his heart come back up yes. god yes. in jesus name and let amen. it function normally amen and amen praise mm -hmm. god amen if praise we god. could get in our mind <laughs> the truth that Jesus was trying to get across to the disciples. Mm -hmm. What was he trying to get across? That I have suffered for you. Yes. yes. Amen. Therefore, they would immediately embrace the covenant of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Same thing that happened with us. If we could get in our mind to say Jesus suffered for us. Yeah. He took Amen. my penalty mm -hmm. for sin. Mm -hmm. Now the penalty of that was death ultimately, but was also the curse. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if the debt of curse has been paid, why do we feel that the blessings of God are not ours? Amen. Yeah. Two of our viewers have comments. Amber says, it's amazing to think that Jesus suffered and died for someone like me, someone who was unworthy of that love, but he sees me as worthy. Amen. And Adam says, praise Jesus. What a work he performed. So heavy a work. The burden of suffering that it caused him to sweat blood in the garden. Even so, he said, not my will, but yours be done. He says, Amen. make them want to shout. <laughs> that was a, a great thing. Realize that again, it is so many times people think, well, you're just trying to manipulate God. You're just mm -hmm. trying to get God to do something. I can't get God to do anything. Amen. I, mean, I can't even prolong a good day fishing. <laughs> Come night, it's coming. Yeah. And whether I like it or not, I can't change the shadows. Mm -hmm. I have to submit to the declaration and the decrees of God mm -hmm. that when day is gone and when he has determined that it comes to an end, the sun goes down and the moon comes up. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what I have to do now is if I submit to that type of law or rule or will of God, should not I submit to it all? That mm -hmm. if God said he wanted me blessed, then shouldn't I be blessed? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I talk yes. about blessing? Shouldn't yes. I move in blessing? Should yes. I resist Absolutely. it? Now, if it's already been paid, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It's been paid. It's been paid. It's already a past tense. It's thing. done. Yeah, it's done. It's already done. <clears throat> yeah. Rick, did you go back to sleep? No, but I was sitting there thinking that if I could just wrap my mind around that, then Romans 8 and 1 would be a ever-present mindset that I would have. There is therefore now no yeah. condemnation. And I, th I think it's a lack of that understanding that does allow condemnation to come in. Not only condemnation, Rick, then it's almost like we get in us the mindset that we should suffer mm -hmm. because we've done so much wrong mm -hmm. but you can't pay the bill it's right. already paid Been paid amen so no matter what you let the devil trick you into or no matter what your religious standing or no matter what your unrenewed mind says 
about you not being worthy, that is simply an, an indictment against that we don't have enough faith that Jesus suffered for us on the cross. Mm, mm, mm. It's done. Yep. I think now all we have it. to do is live in it. <coughs> Remember the curse. The curse has already been paid for. Amen. All penalty. So Amen. if you want to know what you have been freed from, if you want to know all the things that every promise covers, go back, read Deuteronomy 28, clear through the end of this uh, chapter, and see the curse Amen. and realize that you are freed from that curse. Amen. Amen. Now, you never let somebody, well, what if, uh, Somebody came and uh, let's say you bought a living room couch and uh, you went there and it was on sale in uh, Morris's Furniture, uh, Value City, uh, Walmart, wherever, and uh, American Freight, where, where are we going to buy? And you go in and you pay cash. Hallelujah. You hit the lottery called the tax return. Okay, you got your tax return, you go in and you pay for it. Well, three days later, a guy knocks on your door and says, uh, ma'am, uh, we've come for your couch. What do you mean you've come for my couch? Well, you were supposed to pay uh, today, and here it is, the end of the day, you haven't paid, we've come for the couch. What would you do? Call the police. You know, yeah. That's my couch. <laughs> Really? And what would you do when you called the police? I'd tell them I already paid for that couch. It's yep. been paid for. I got mm. a receipt. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't just roll over and give up? No. no. So no way. you wouldn't say, well, yeah, the couch is worth so much. And yeah, I, I love it. I, I guess I can pay again. No. No, absolutely and not. When, when that enforcer of the law mm -hmm. came, mm -hmm. he would really be, let me say this very lightly, he would be God of the situation oh, yeah. because he has authority. authority. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so what does he do? You start putting him into remembrance of the law of the yeah. land. Come on. Yeah. Because yeah. what you did, it doesn't really matter. What you can prove does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would pull out the receipt and say, you see this? Yeah. And that's why when the devil comes, Jesus pulled out his receipt Ooh, and he like said, this. it is written. Amen. That Amen. That is our receipt. Amen. Amen. So, so, so Andrew, Andrew has a question for you. Yeah. He said, what about the martyrs? While they die in faith, they experience suffering. Can you break that down for me? They were suffering. We'll talk about this tomorrow. They were suffering for righteousness sake. Right. So there's a difference in the sufferings, dad, that we're talking about. Like the first right. day, the, the substitutionary work of suffering is not what men put upon you, but right. meaning no. sin, the, 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 act yep. of the, um, uh, outcome of sin is removed. Right. Yes. Yes. That curse has been broken off our lives. Right. The power and the, the reign of, of death in our lives, that's been broken. Right. But the I suffering see. of our companionship with Jesus yeah. has not. That's Remember, Jesus made it very personal. They do it unto you. They did it unto me. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we suffer for righteousness sake, when the martyrs suffered for their faith, they weren't suffering for their sin. Mm -hmm. They were suffering for their righteousness in mm -hmm. Christ. Amen. Wow. They were suffering for their witness. They were mm -hmm. suffering for their union with God. Mm -hmm. They were suffering for their stand to say, Jesus is the one that died for my sins. Mm -hmm. Paul said it, I think, in Acts 17, uh, uh, Philip, when you go to Acts 17, 2, yep, and uh, read that, and that will tell us 
what Paul was suffering for. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Jesus, that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead in that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. See, that was his message. Israel never doubted that God had paved the way or made a proclamation that a Messiah would come. Mm -hmm. Someone that would die in your place mm -hmm. and that they would be free. But mm -hmm. they doubted that it was Jesus. Right. right. Amen. See, Amen. the gospel is, is, has no need to prove that man was a sinner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to prove that. People mm -hmm. know that they are sinners. Amen. They have a conscience, Amen. an awareness yep. of God. But who paid their price? Mm -hmm. To whom now do they owe their debt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That is to Jesus. Some would say, <clears throat> well, Mohammed. Some would say, you know, this or that, Buddhism, uh, uh, all this high stuff. But we know that we preach and allege that Jesus is the one that did it. Amen. Praise God. So the gospel is an answer to who did it. Amen. Yeah. And so now man can freely come unto God through one Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But the great Amen. argument of that or the contention or those that don't believe that those that don't accept that now focus their anger their rejection of jesus christ mm -hmm. upon you yep amen because you are the mouthpiece that's declaring it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's so good i like yep. that amen. identification about the curse. I think that clears a lot of stuff up. Andrew said that cleared it up for him. That was mm -hmm. important. Yeah, we we need never that's why all the promises are yea and amen. It's not mm -hmm. based on your goodness. It's based upon the payment of the cross. Amen. Praise so God. So don't ever say, well God, I haven't done this or I haven't done that. You don't have to do it. Amen. It's already <laughs> been done yeah. all you got to do is show them the amen uh, right. that's what God. this is this is the proof that amen. has been paid it is the proof that you are free it's the proof that all the blessings of abraham will come upon you amen amen so now they're up on you praise god and all you have to do is accept them. Right. Mm, mm, mm. So all you have to do is put, instead of negativity, you put the promise in your mouth. And so state God. the reality of the paid debt. Yeah. And you stand and refuse to let the devil come in your house and take your couch. Mm, mm. Mm. Amen. So, Praise so God. Adam Adam asks, is this how we're able to shod our feet with the gospel of peace in Ephesians 6 and 4, 6, 14? That is the preparation of the gospel of peace, mm -hmm. is the ability to present Jesus Christ as our debt payer, the Lamb of God. So, yes, that's absolutely, Adam, having that uh, knowledge about it, that you might convince the gainsayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Paul contended it wasn't that they didn't believe it was going to happen. They just didn't believe that it was Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Okay, somebody chide in, help me. Hallelujah. <laughs> that, Come on, that, Rick. What that do is you such, got? That's when I, I was listening to you earlier, that's just such an identity shift, you know, to understand that because you know, in life, I think um 
I know I've been, you know, just, I've had to battle uh, my position, my thoughts of myself, what I, uh, what I, what I deserve, what I don't deserve, but all that gets very clear when I, it becomes very clear when I know that Jesus paid the price for me. So I don't, I don't have to, as you, uh, as been echoed earlier, I just don't have to prove anything. I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to take it upon myself to establish, you know, who I am. I don't have to walk around with the insecurities or the chip on my shoulder or anything like that because, because Jesus paid that price for me. So if I would just rest and be comfortable in that, I think about all the insecurities I would not have had, mm -hmm. you know, in times past. Yeah. When, when we uh, think about, when we walk around, we're always walking around conscious of our past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that when Jesus' blood was shed, <clears throat> when he paid the price, the ultimate price for our sins, that he freed us from that. Now what we have to do is walk around without a mindset of our mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. but a mindset of our present state. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we I, all the time are trying to walk by <clears throat> feeling or, or, you know, like Rick said, a worthy or of that. But realize this, that no matter how much you try to become, mm -hmm. uh, let me say this, uh, no matter how much you try to remind yourself that you were a sinner, that you're not worthy, it cannot undo the work of the cross. Amen. Praise God. In so fact, I love you, you can go around saying, well, I'm just unworthy. But the truth of the matter is, all you got to do is look at the receipt. Yeah. You are no longer a sinner. Amen. You are a saint, an yes. innocent one, a justified yes. one, a qualified yes. one to walk yes. with God. Amen. So when we uh, <laughs> go around what we have to do, Rick, is we have to transform our mind and accept who we are in Christ. Some, mm -hmm. some things are real easy, uh, like uh, you go and you buy a car. Uh, you bring it home, you put it in your car, the, you know, the police pulls up and says, uh, hey, uh, we see you got a car out here, is this yours? We say, well, sure. So you start your argument that you are the property owner of that car, okay? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is give the receipt. Yeah. Now, that car is yours. Now, the powers that be will protect your ownership of mm -hmm. that car. Amen. So, no longer do you walk around saying, boy, I don't have a car. Boy, I, you know, man, we need a car. And uh, right. if we had the money, we'd get a car. And if right. we did this, we'd have a car. What do you do? Yeah. You go around telling everybody you got a car. Amen. Amen. And act yeah. like it. Yep. And then that's why I love 2 Corinthians 5, 17, because it says that we are now new creatures in Christ. And so yep. we need to take that identity every time we feel guilty or condemnation, say, nope, I'm a new creature in Christ. And uh, this life is brand new for me. And we need to keep that mindset. Mm -hmm. You so, know, sometimes people make their own prisons. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's kind of like uh, if somebody would come up to you and say, oh, hey, I heard you got saved. Yeah, I did, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, have you been uh, reading your Bible every day and praying for five hours and stuff and mm -hmm. fasting three days a week? no I, I no no they didn't tell me i had to do that well i think you should and then what you would do is you'd go to the receipt mm -hmm. or you'd go to the verification of your identity and you'd say i don't see these clauses in here mm -hmm. amen now not amen. that it's not good to pray right not that it's not good to read the word 
Yeah. But just to be honest, that's not the requirements of salvation. Amen. Nope. That's the requirement of a deepening, growing faith. Yeah. It is the requirement of deepening intimacy with mm -hmm. God. Amen. But it is not a requirement of you being saved. Amen. So if you Praise haven't God. prayed for the last six months, let's just say you've had an attitude. Maybe you've been treating God like you have your husband. Uh, mm. or your wife because you got mm. in a skirmish or got mm. mad or got fed up or whatever people do um, got gas I don't know uh, <laughs> I've seen this sign one time it says stop eat get gas I Amen. thought well I'm not eating there man so <laughs> I just drove on but the point being is that sometimes we make ourselves something that we're not Right. Now, we don't have to pray. We don't have to read. Now, you, you will ultimately wither and uh, stuff like that. But you don't have to go back and repent. Well, I haven't prayed God for six months since I've been saved. I'm such a wretched sinner. No, no, no. That didn't make you a sinner. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so you Jack have to walk in it. Jasmine's asking a question. She said, so since Jesus broke the curse with his suffering, does it mean that there is no more severe pain in childbearing or painful labor when I give birth hmm. or when giving birth? It, now, I will say yes, because what happens is this. We are freed from the curse. But remember, all of the promises are given to us through faith and patience. Right. Now, the problem mm -hmm. with childbirth is everybody tells you all your life you're going to have pain mm -hmm. oh my word i was in labor for six months i was in, <laughs> you know look i mean we you hear horror stories you know my word they had to put a come along in on it and that baby just wouldn't come you know my word you hear all kinds of horror stories but mm -hmm. we never preach that so people don't get faith in it mm -hmm. Mm -mm. and uh there are lots of things that we don't preach that we're freed from but it doesn't ever come upon us because we are taught the opposite for years mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we hear that and we say oh hallelujah mm -hmm. which i would encourage you to choose hallelujah than to brace mm -hmm. for fear Amen. Amen. And, and suffering. But then what I would do, I would start using my faith long before I was going to have faith. Yeah, truly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, because we are freed from all of the curse, not just some of it, all of it. Right. Exactly. Sam Love says, amen. We also have to put on our armor every day because people in the world will remind us of our past and what we used to do. And then Rebecca says, when I go to the altar, when I go to the altar and leave it to God, I learned I had to leave it, even my most precious gifts of God, because I can't do what God can do. And Wayne said, Elaine uh, stood on that no pain in childbearing. And when she had the girls, she didn't have any pain. Boom. Mm. I praise God. Hallelujah. But she still had you, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> and so that, that was a remember of the pain no i'm kidding but you, we see that you know we embrace the uh living under the curse but we don't embrace the work of the suffering of christ mm -hmm. remember what paul said he said i have to count the things of this world as dung, and i have to Remember that Christ has suffered for me, that I can move on yeah. and lay hold mm -hmm. of that which I've been called for. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get beyond this condemnation, this mm -hmm. suffering attitude, this always a sinner, uh, never completing Christ, if we don't move on into the reality of who we are, start proclaiming who you are. Philip, who are you? I am a son of the living God. Hallelujah. 
That's true. <laughs> that is true. But but I'm who Philip are you Walker, today? Where whose husband, house are you in? I was about to say, but I'm Philip Walker, the husband of Regina, living here in a, a house that God blessed us with, and the father of Philip Jr. Yeah, did you see his eyes go over there? I can tell you right now, Regina is on his left because he's looking, honey, honey, make sure I say this right. Because he is afraid of the rat. No, see, we automatically get married. We start saying, uh, oh, no, I'm Phyllis's husband. I'm this, I'm that. And uh, we have no problem with identities except when it comes to the identity of God because mm. that is questionable. Now, we have a contract mm -hmm. that tells everybody we're married. But mm -hmm. we also have 66 books of a contract that tells us Amen. that we are redeemed. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't worry about what you haven't done. Don't worry mm -hmm. about all the little stumbling blocks that you're stumbling at. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is start declaring boldly Amen. who you are. Amen. Right now. <coughs> Because Praise the blood God. has already been shed. Mm -hmm. Rick, it's been shed. You can't get any more power mm -hmm. out of it than mm -hmm. you already have now. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't get Jesus. any more saved than you are right now. Right. You can't Amen. get any Praise more God. righteous than you are right now. Mm -hmm. And Amen. so mm -hmm. I don't know what we're struggling with when we already have the receipt. But mm -hmm. if you say what the receipt said, the police will show up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Melanie, Melanie says, Jesus died to take the burden. When we don't receive that, step into it and walk in it, the weight of that burden remains on us. Mm. Yes. Absolutely. So so and good. that's when we open the door to the devil. Mm -hmm. We get mm -hmm. depressed. We get discouraged. We get filled with questions. We get all kinds of stuff happen and then we start speaking what we're feeling or we start speaking what we're going through or what we are suffering or you know what we're facing instead of declaring who we are amen <clears throat> yeah amen and you declare who you are lots 90 percent of your life will transform itself mm -hmm. yeah. amen i look i look at what we're talking about and i see multiple areas in my own life where I would, I, I say that I don't live in that condemnative nature. I say that I'm redeemed. I say that my identity is in Christ. However, there are blind spots mm. <laughs> someone in our lives that I think we, we peripheral, we, if we would just turn enough that we would see this blind spot that God wants to get to, to go, hey, hang on. You see judgment as a bad thing. You see what? chastisement as a bad thing, but really that's my love overall for you. Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. dad, you've, you've showed it to me when, when we've been talking about things, you'll say something like, Nicole, what do you think about this? And I'll tell you, and you'll go, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Why do you think you do? And that's a blind spot that was revealed to me. You could see the car coming up, and, but I couldn't because it's hidden, that little window. So yeah. my, my prayer is today is that just through this conversation and this talk that we would see the completeness of that substitutionary work, that the Holy Spirit would reveal to us those, those blind spots that don't, that stop us from being able to apprehend the fullness of what God did, not just in part. I don't want right. the, the left side of the cross. I want all the cross yeah. in my life. And I feel that um, we as believers have to press towards that. It's not enough that when we get saved, we just go, oh, okay. When you see what I think it was Rick saying earlier, that if he could just truly see himself the way God sees him, Eight, Romans 8 1 that he would where he would be I think the issue is is that it's looking at those blind spots and saying God like why don't I believe the fullness of it why am I struggling in this area because I think it goes back to yeah. this root I think mm -hmm. this is a huge root in our life that that we say we we've been saved and we just move on but do we really 
believe and look at those spots that are hidden from us that we say things out of our mouth. Remember, the board says that out of our heart doth the mouth speak. So when you say those things that are negative about yourself and it's not what lines up with the word of God, where's the root of that? Do you really <laughs> believe that God suffered it all for that Jesus suffered it for you? Because I, yeah. I it's the unrenewed mind. Uh, yeah. Rick, how about yes. uh, Chris today? You got a little boy named Chris, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to get up here in another hour, and uh, he's going to run through that house like he owns it. He's yep. going to run through the refrigerator. He's going to eat whatever yep. he wants to eat. He's yep. going to leave the mess for you to pick up, and uh, <laughs> he's going to go use your bathroom, flush your toilet. He's going to get into your stuff. He might put your watch on. I, he might yep. not wear your underwear, but, you know, my grandkids <laughs> do. I get in, I say, my word, these aren't mine, fellow says, oh, yes, they are. I said, do you think my rear end would fit in these? <laughs> these, are, these are not mine. Now, they wear mine, but I can't wear theirs. Now, but, Rick, you aren't going to say anything to him. Mm -hmm. Yet, you and Lynn have went out and suffered. You have put forth energy. You have already paid the bill for mm -hmm. that food. You paid the bill for that yes, water. Lord. You paid the bill for everything in there. And they're going to take your their pajamas or their clothes. They're going to throw them on the floor. They're going to put new ones on. And uh, if they don't have them there, they're going to complain to you and say, hey, where's my clothes? What, where are them ones? No, they're dirty. I want clean ones. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to run to the laundry room. You're going to iron them. And uh, you're going to do whatever. Uh, now you might do what I do to Phyllis when she says, where's my black black dress or something? If it's in the wash, I go get it, put spray free breeze on it, and then present it to her like it's been washed and dry cleaned. <laughs> but, no, I'm kidding. So, but you see what I'm saying, Rick? Your kids have no problem with eating what you have suffered to provide for them. Do you, do you live here? Do you, cause, cause you just <laughs> explained a typical day uh, here, but I tell you what you reveal, they don't walk through this house feeling like they have to earn, you know, anything. Come they on, just no. accept, you know, and it's if I could just make it that simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, here's Lincoln and uh, Quentin's uh, thing. You know, last year I bought me a, a new range finder because the previous ones have been stolen and given to their friends. And uh, <laughs> so I buy a nice one. Uh, you know, it's not a real nice one. It's 200 and some dollars. That's nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm shooting it. Lincoln says, boy, that's nice, Papa. Man, it's better than this old one I've got. <laughs> so uh, I said, oh, okay. And uh, so pretty soon the conversation leads uh yeah, hey, thank you, Papa. I'll just keep it in my bag. Well, I know what that means. I'm taking this. So he has it now, and I have none. So I've got to yell over, hey, Lincoln, uh, could I, uh, what, what, how far out are we? Well, Papa, why don't you get a range finder? I'm thinking, I had one. Now, with me, since he said, boy, you know, Papa, I'd like to have a range finder. You know, Lincoln's got a real nice one. But if you'd get one of these, well, the one that he wants, is 400 and some dollars. Wow. But I'll just tell you what my Chris, my birthday gift is going to be. It's going to have to be a range finder so Quentin can have the newest of it all. <laughs> because love compels me to give them the desires of their heart. Mm -hmm. They don't have, listen, I am shipping boxes of clothes to their house for golf for some why i don't know it compels me to do it you say well you're crazy no i'm not crazy i'm in love <laughs> <laughs> and i'm all shook up <laughs> it, so it's the you, love you of a grandparent probably the closest love uh to jesus uh, that he has for us <laughs> It's the most expensive <laughs> love, I'll tell you that. And uh, no, but you got to realize that we have an identity. 
when they walk in at the golf course, they don't ever have, they don't have to have a dime. They go over, they get something to eat, and they say, hey, put that on Papa's tab. Oh, okay. And uh, because I've already told them, look, whatever these guys want, whatever they need, you go ahead and give it to them. And all that. they say, okay, no problem, Pete, none. So you can drop your kids off and come back in three months, and they'll be fat, fed, and exercised, and uh, <laughs> dressed well. So, you know, you, uh, you, you just got to embrace – who we are, your kids do it, Rick. And yeah. what you've got to do is accept that your kids, that you are loved more than your kids are loved by you. Amen. Mm. Amen. So we we've uh, we have to embrace that Jesus already did it. Yep. Not a problem. Rick, Amen. just stand up and start acting like you live in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. just like you live in the house Amen. and uh, there is no place in your house sacred right no. i mean lincoln's got watches quentin's got watches name you go down to my gun thing they say oh this is mine and that's mine i say well yeah after i'm dead it is yeah well we know that bubble, but yeah. this is mine and that's mine i have none my wife has picked that up she said oh no this is my rifle I'm thinking, they're none of yours. It's mine. <laughs> so what I get to do is use them. <laughs> I own nothing. Wayne, so. Wayne Vondenhuvel says, on Easter, when pastor prayed for acid reflux, and after I declared that Jesus had healed me, I was healed. I haven't had to take any medicine since. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Praise God. And Anybody that's sick, you know that you can come to. The good thing of it is, God, your father, is a physician. Amen. Amen. You can come to him anytime you want. And you don't have to pay. Mm -mm. It's all mm -hmm. free. Mm. That's awesome. Praise God. Amen. Okay, tomorrow, we are going to get back into uh, suffering for righteousness sake. We'll go a little deeper into, I, I know that. You know, we hear these things, but we have to continue mm -hmm. to hear them to shake up things in our life. Amen. Uh, have you ever uh, been out on the beach on vacation and then come in and you got sand in the uh, little cuffs on your pants and mm -hmm. then you throw them up on the couch that uh, you're renting for that week and sand goes everywhere. Then you brush it off. Well, you know what? When we're walking through this world, that stuff gets attached to us. Mm. And it fills it up, and we bring it right into the house. Mm. Pretty soon, it begins to taint our house. It begins to taint our house. Mm. And then mm. when we try to clean it up, we spread it all over the place. Mm. So we got to make sure that we protect our houses, protect the confessions of those that are in our house, what if you, Rick, got up and you told a little Chris today, hey, that ain't your food. I paid for that. Mm -hmm. He would fight would he me. He'd he go ahead and eat it anyway. Yeah, you know why? Hey, how you doing, buddy? You know why, Rick? He knows mm -hmm. that your love would never do that. If exactly. you will learn who God is on your behalf, when the devil tries to lie to you, you'll roar back and laugh at him. Mm -hmm. I'm eating this anyway. That's right. This is mine. So let's do that. Amen. So, Nikki, you pray for our viewers today. And, and thank you guys for joining us. And uh, I'm sorry I get, I get a, I mean, hallelujah. I'm excited about Jesus. Amen. And, uh, Amen. So. Let Nikki, you pray for us, okay? Hey, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. And Lord, I thank you, God, that any places in our lives, Father, that we're not accepting the fullness of what Christ suffered for, Father, you would reveal to us. 
Father, reveal the mindset of the old man, God, renew it, transform it in our lives, God, that we could receive that which you have already paid the price for. Father, I thank you, God, that you would begin to show yourself, Father, as you every single day, faithful, Father, in the people's lives that are viewing on the prayer table, God, that they would receive it, Father, walk in it, Father, live in it, and possess everything that you've given for us. In Jesus' name, I pray, and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow right here on the prayer table at 730. Hey, God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.